Welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast, where we discuss dynasty strategy, rankings, and all things NFL. So get ready to geek out on fantasy football with your host, Rich Dotson. And welcome to the Dynasty one. Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm Rich Dotson. He's Matt O'Hara. Hey, hey. He's Garrett Price. How's it going? And we are playing Dynasty Fantasy Football games. We have Pick Your Poison. We've got the Isaiah likely meter today. That's right. Um, you know, we'll do this show probably a couple, definitely in the summertime. Yeah. Like after we do the rookie breakdowns, like we need a little bit of fun in our lives. Yeah. But there's, these games are always great conversations. They are. And it's not just games for game's sake. Like, it leads into what should we do with this play? Like It's that the, discussion. Right. The, the, the first game, pick your poison. This is literally what you have to do in startup drafts. Like, shoot, would I take this guy or this guy? I don't I don't know. It, it's it's a tough call. Draft an old team and then bail on the league. Yeah, crushed it. Trade all my first. Trade all my first round picks and bail on the league. <laughs> you got some bitter AF. What? What's happening? Dude, nerd leagues are locked in. I don't worry about that. Like I, that's why we do leagues with the nerd herd. That's because it's there forever. Nobody ever leaves. They never fold. It's guaranteed to FFPC, baby. Basically. So, Basically. all right, let's kick us off. Pick your poison, uh, Garrett. You are the host of these games. That's right. Shows, so, uh, abracadabra, bitches. Come on down. <laughs> You're the next contestant on <laughs> Pick Your Poison. Squeeze my nipples. Easy, Rich. This <laughs> is. I didn't scoot closer not for no reason. Nerd herd. Uh, <laughs> did you guys notice our thing changed to explicit? When. I don't. Somebody reached out to me. Ooh. Yeah, they're like, "Hey, when did your guys' thing switch to explicit?" I was like, "I don't know. Probably something they said slipped through the cracks, and <laughs> and somebody heard it, and we're big enough now that people will notice." And they changed their thing to explicit. Well, at least now you can do it freely. They know. <laughs> I they know ahead of time. I remember one time I said something, and somebody wrote me on Twitter like, "Hey, man, like I listen to your show with my kids in the car. I don't appreciate that." I don't think I wrote back, but like. I guess now they know. You'd hate to now you're it. warned. Explicit. You'd hate to hang out with me. <laughs> All I do is swear. <laughs> the F word's my favorite word. I swear my kids, like not at them, but like with them, like I just, hey, dude, this is effing dumb. Like, do you just realize what you did? It's F- Same thing. Like, do you just see what you did with your slides? You're, it's effing dumb. That is effing dumb. All right. Well, pick your poison. <laughs> okay. In pick your poison, I will give you two players with very similar ADP. You choose which one you would rather have on your team in a startup. They're what? And why? Average D position. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them are draft. Round hip level. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them. Most. That's of them. the average. <laughs> John Holmes is knee level. <laughs> uh, all right. Here we now, go. I just <laughs> got to the, You guys both watch Boys, right? The Boys? The Boys, yeah. Huh. Yeah. I just got to the. Um, the one when they went to the institution and the guy had the really long. Oh animal. yeah. It was like a snake. Yeah. Like an anaconda. Like, they like punched through a window and was like choking a guy. He was like, and then when, <laughs> when they opened the door and he's like, was that just his, Oh geez. Oh God. <laughs> Wait till you get to the uh, spinoff. The, uh, what's it called? Oh yeah. Uh, what is that called? V Gen. Yeah. Gen, Gen v. v. Gen V. There's a whole another. There's another one. ADP. Okay. This is uh, <laughs> his offspring. I'm guessing. I don't know. No, no, it's just girl shrinks. Anyways, go on. Oh, no, no. There's another guy like that in that one, too. Never mind. This is not important. Anyway. No, <laughs> no it is not. Sorry. Way off on a tangent. The explicit on. rating. Here we go. Let me show my chief Wahoo glasses. It's pretty explicit, too. <laughs> All right. Pick your poison. Would you rather have quarterback 20, Baker Mayfield? Yes. I thought you were just going to go quarterback 20. That was just <laughs> I swear I did too. Quarterback 20 or quarterback 19. Pick your poison. I will take the higher. Well, host Garrett, give me door 21. <laughs> Would you rather have quarterback 20, Baker Mayfield? That's actually a good game for you to come up with, by the way, <laughs> for next time. There we go. Just blind choice. This is who you got. This is what you got. Who had the best team based on no names? What did you learn from an episode? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is my team was better. It's very explicit. <laughs> All right, quarterback twenty, Baker Mayfield, or quarterback nineteen, Captain Kirk Cousins. Ooh. I mean, going based off of age, all that kind of good stuff. I mean, and the fact that Kirk Cousins is coming off an injury, and 
I would expect a, a pretty similar outcome for Baker next year. I would go Baker. If I had to take love out of it, I would go with Baker. <laughs> <laughs> if I put my love into it, it's I'm double. definitely going Baker. Definitely Baker. Going Baker. Yeah, double, yeah, like double Matt Baker. said, I mean, come off Achilles injury, uncertain where he's going to play, probably Minnesota. He's 33. Baker's 28. You know, that's a fi- it's not, that's not a small gap window. That's like a five-year window. Doesn't mean Baker's going to play till 33, so it's not like it's a guaranteed five-year window, but, like, I'll take that. Who's going to give me high-end, mid-range quarterback two numbers? I feel really good about and, that. And, you know, when we think of Kirk Cousins, we kind of had this picture of what he is now. But five years ago – or maybe even a little bit more, he was this guy that was kind of... Baker Mayfield? Baker Mayfield, right, yeah. exactly. So what we might be able to get is a, a five-year kind of window of what Kirk Cousins kind of was leading up to what he is now. Yeah, I mean, if you're getting if you're getting two QB2s, essentially, right. like, give me the five years, or give me one extra year. And, and, and in fairness, you know, they were both QB1. Like, Kirk Cousins was QB5 or something like that. QB6. QB six. Um, yep. I, I'm actually going Kirk Cousins. Beep. <laughs> I, I'm going Kirk Cousins uh, okay. on this one, and that's part of it. Kirk Cousins was quarterback six. We know that this is going to roughly be the exact same offense from before. Uh, obviously, you'll miss a few weeks with with TJ Hawkinson there, but you'll get him back. But part of it was uh, Baker Mayfield was good. He had a good season. It wasn't anything spectacular. He was nowhere near that top six range. Um, and I don't know how realistic it, that is in his range of outcomes. He's probably going to lose Mike Evans this year. And he lost his offensive coordinator, which those are two big losses uh, for Baker Mayfield. So I'm going to take the track record and the consistency that we've had from Kirk Cousins. Even if, you know, it, it's four years. We've talked about it before. Four years is an eternity in, in fantasy football. So even if I only get four years out of Kirk Cousins – I'm not as worried about the injury because his game wasn't predicated on running. It, that wasn't part of his game. So, for me, I think Kirk Cousins is the guy that I would go with out of the two. Who did they end up uh, – didn't they stay in-house there in Tampa Bay? They did. They yeah, did. With the offensive coordinator. But it sometimes it's a Brian Dable, and the guy behind him isn't, uh, isn't very good. You had Dorsey. Yeah. Who's now the Browns' offensive coordinator. Thank you. <laughs> that should be interesting. Yeah. So, and I do think it's close. I understand why they're both in this tier. But Kirk Cousins, just his consistency over the years, and I think he just has a better chance to reach a ceiling that I don't know that Baker Mayfield can hit without Mike Evans in a new offense. It, again, you're, you're we're looking at this, like a good idea of like a startup kind of when you're mm-hmm. on the clock, these are the guys available, which way you land. They're obviously in the same tier. We're tearing down. Oh, boy. All but right. you're not getting anything extra. Next. You're just tuned down for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next one here. I put this one in because this is a surprise. Now, this is all Dynasty Nerds ADP. This one surprised me that these two names were right next to each other. So I feel like I know the way you guys are going to go, but we should discuss it either way because this was shocking to me. Running back 11, Rashad White. Or running back 12, Saquon Barkley. Hmm. For me, you guys think about it. This was easily (coughs) Saquon Barkley. This was not close. Uh, I, I know that Rashad White just came off of a good year, but similar to how we just talked about with Baker Mayfield, new offensive scheme coming in. Uh, maybe not a new scheme, but a new offensive coordinator. Lightning doesn't always strike twice. And he Saquon was, Barkley, even in New York, I feel better about him than I do Rashad White. If he ends up in a Dallas or a you know yeah. one of these other situations, he could have a running back one overall type of season. So, for me, it's easily Saquon Barkley. I get that you get an extra three, four years there uh, with Rashad White. You do not get do you how, ma- how many is do it? You? How many is it? Two at the most? I th- that's the thing. I think they're... In uh, age, yes. In age. Oh, age, yeah. yeah sure. Oh, just, yeah, I'm talking about, like, actual production oh, no, 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 no. in the NFL, age, though. Age. You do yes. not get an extra. Running back to now. Um, so, I, I feel like their lifespan is pretty close. Like, yeah. I feel like that's a close yeah. um, tier. But I'll take the better. I think they're equal in the passing game. Saquon's better. Um, and Saquon's better between the tackles. So I'll take Saquon. No, similar. Uh, definitely Saquon would be my answer as well. Uh, that wouldn't take very long. I I, I, pro- I proclaimed it before you even <laughs> said the second person. Right. And, and, and it's just because I don't really have long-term belief in a guy like uh, Rashad White. I think he, he did 
he did better than expected, but I still see him as a very short window type of guy. Yeah. And and say so that eliminates the age difference for me. And, and Rashad White just kind of strikes me as one of those random receiving backs that sneak in as a running back one. We saw it from a guy like Jared McKinnon, Drew yeah. Cohen. This happens. He's just very inefficient. They're going to look for an upgrade yes. for an all around back. The I, only thing I, that's saving I him believe. is not a great rookie class. Yeah. But. But it's a there's a lot in there's a lot of free agents a lot of free agents out there. How about a no? It's an interesting buy. I'm just looking at these running back one finishes where like um, Rashad White finishes running back four. The fact that Alvin Kamara still finishes a running back one missed the first what three games? Missed the first three games and then play the last week as well and still averaged 17.9 points per game. Yeah, and he might be a player that opt on. He's a player they might off offload this season for. (laughs) They need to offload like half that freaking team, dude. It'd be an interesting spot where he ends up. (laughs) It will be. I feel bad for Clint Kubiak, who just arrived as their offensive oh, coordinator. Dude, Alvin Kamara and the Rams? Yeah. Dude, six to midnight. Yeah, but Kyron's Rams, there. The Rams already got somebody. I don't, I don't, and he's I cheap. like Kyron. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Send, well, send him to, like, Arizona. Ooh, him and Kyler and Marvin Harrison yeah. Jr.? Yeah. Send him there. Oh, yeah. In the desert? Go out there and buy Alvin Kamara. There we go. Next. Next. All right, uh, this goes uh, off of a guy that we talked about in our off-brand episode. Would you rather have tight end two Trey McBride or tight end three TJ Hawkinson? Oh, Hawkinson. Yeah. He's just longer track record, just signed a long-term deal, stud towards ACL. That sucks. But yeah, but he's probably going to miss the start of the season. He will. Yeah. It'll probably be a be, mid mid year. It was a, it was a late surgery too. It mm-hmm. was one of those ones that they had it to wait a month. Actual, yeah, yeah, yeah. After the season, and this is, might be one I might regret down the road. But as of today, yeah, going into his ACL tear, he was my t- dynasty tight end one. Mm-hmm. Now it's Sam Laporta. So like, yeah, I mean McBride's in that tier, but I'm taking the for sure guarantee. Like we don't know what's happening with McBride when if they draft Marvin Harrison Jr. and they bring another receiver in as well. I think um, that's my biggest concern is who else do they bring in? If yeah. it was nobody, then then this would be a lot more difficult for me if I really thought he was still going to be the number one target in Arizona. But I don't think he will be. Yep, I, I agree. It's uh, TJ Hawkinson for me. And and the injury sucks, And but this is a move forever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know I mean, you, you, you're going to have TJ, not forever, but you're going to have TJ Hawkinson for the next still very seven young. years or something like that. Five to seven years. Brees Hall tore his ACL. Where are you drafting him in startups? Justin Jefferson missed most of the season this year. Still yep. drafting him pretty high. Yep. Ain't really too worried about it. Exactly. Injuries happen. It's it's part of the game. We just happen to know that this one happened, and there's a you know a chunk. Of, be a gap. There's, it's a, there's a chunk of games at the beginning. He's gonna miss. I just made a move for. Um, I traded for Hawkinson. I gave up DK Metcalf and two one for Hawkinson, and. It sucks knowing I don't have a tight end early, but at least I know I have a good tight end yeah. going forward after you, that. And you can always find a Pat Fryermuth, a Evan Ingram, a whoever. It's why it's a buy window. Like, like injuries always open up in dynasty buy windows. Always. And if you can't ACL even get tennis. those guys, okay, then give me Higby and Hunter Henry for six, eight weeks. Well, not Higby because he just tore his ACL in that. Okay, not Higby, but you get the point. You get the point. I get the point. That area of of player is you can get them for two fourths and they'll serve fine until that guy comes yep. back. They sure will. All right. Uh two other guys. Now I put this together before we had our uh before we I knew who we everyone was doing. So these are two players that we talked about quite a bit on the last episode as well. So I'm curious to pit them head to head now though. Would you rather have wide receiver twelve Nico Collins? A wide receiver 14, Michael Pittman Jr. Oh, give me Michael Pittman Jr. All day. Um, that is tough. Not for that me. was really tough for me. Because uh, Collins does have a couple extra years. Yeah. He does, but he also doesn't have to keep he has to compete with Tank Dell. He does have to And they're probably gonna bring more I wouldn't be surprised to bring a running back in, a more dynamic running back. I wouldn't sure. be surprised to bring the What do you think? Like he's just going to sit around with one wide receiver? I was going to say, w- we could see Josh Downs elevating his game this year. I wouldn't be surprised if they went out and got somebody as um, well. But as of right now, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So it's true. It's pretty close, but I would take Michael Pittman Jr., who's, who I expect to get that long-term contract as well. Yeah. So it is close. Listen, I, I, I don't say, like, oh, it's a slam dunk. I'm going to go Pittman as well. And... Yeah. 
it's it is by the narrowest of margins, and it's because I have Pittman on my teams, and <laughs> I don't have any. It's need because to. I'm biased, <laughs> and I'm biased. <laughs> that so that's it. Like that that's the tiebreaker, and people have all sorts of goofy tiebreakers that they operate under in these situations when you're in startup draft. So if I was in a startup draft, I would take him just because I I know what I'm getting. I've had him in my yeah. on my teams. I know what to expect week in and week out. And Garrett's uh, taking him because his initials are MP. Yes. Well, why would I take him? It would be the opposite of your name, GP. <laughs> My <laughs> middle name, though. Micro GMP. P. Yep, middle P. middle initial is Michael. Yep. Okay, who are you taking there? I'm also taking Michael Pittman Jr. We're three for three on it. Don't rock the boat. Uh, it was, you know, when you talk about your bias, one of the best trades I ever made was this year. I gave up one, what would have ended up being, what, one six or seven. I don't remember. Either narrowly missed the playoffs or just made it and lost. I don't remember. But what what ended up being one six, but I traded it earlier on in the season, and I got Michael Pittman Jr. and Nico Collins in that deal, along with Romeo re- Dobbs as like a throw in. Now I remember. Also that. had yeah. a really good de- to so. Who I, did you get? I love both of these players. Who did you get? Uh, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, either when, one, pick one hundred six or one hundred seven. Oh, this year, this uh, year. Like we got like Quentin Johnson. No, oh. no, no. It's it's this year's it's this year's first. Okay. So I mean, he'll get a decent decent player there. Yeah, if you're in a one. I mean, honestly, he'll probably get Odunze or somebody like that. A lot of people but are he saying won't get three decent players. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know? A lot of people are saying like the sevens where you want to be seven because like, the yeah. sevens you know gives you three quarterbacks and Daniels May and Brock Bowers, uh, Caleb. Then Brock Bowers is four, and then the three receivers: Rome, Marvin Harrison, and Malik. But I mean, there's a lot of chatter of JJ McCarthy going top twelve in NFL. Draft. I've heard that a lot lately, which and is interesting. We'll which, w- which would push him up and yeah. really just... Which means that like 1-8 yeah. all of a sudden becomes a really good value. All of a sudden. Tremendous you, value there. Where you thought you were outside a tier, now you're inside a tier. Yeah. You're going to get a quarter. You're gonna, and then obviously there'll be like a Brian Thomas or somebody goes in the first round. Sure. But that's like a different tier. But like they'd be able to get like that quarterback. Almost like that kind of like how Justin Herbert slipped that year he came out. Where like he went top... Well, he went top 10. Um, but if J.J. McCarthy slides into that top 12 somehow, and somebody moves up, team moves up for him, that's going to be a real nice pick, pick eight. Yeah, yeah, could be really interesting. Uh, but, yeah, I, I do – I like Michael Pittman Jr. just a little bit better. The biggest factor was actually Tank Dell. Tank Dell, wide receiver 13 before he got injured. Like, he was having a fantastic Dog. season. Fantastic season. And I think I think Nico Collins still could finish close to what he had been doing because C.J. Stroud is just that good and he can – utilize both of those players but if they dare get a legitimate third fiddle involved all of a sudden that becomes real murky um you know similar to what's going on in in philly where aj brown and Devontae smith they're both doing well but you add in the third fiddle of dallas goddard all three of them can't do well so somebody's gonna suffer you saw that in san francisco it seems like Ayuk, purdy and kittle are all good players but never can seem to get it all going at the same time whereas Pittman just really has no threat right now of that that top dog role and a ton of targets and I like I like Richardson enough and Richardson targeted him enough to where I feel pretty good about it. You're a so. big consistency guy. Yeah, he's, he, he is definitely consistent. Super consistent. Right. For one day will be. I'm like, oh, crystal ball. I told you. <laughs> 18 surgeries later. Uh, wide receiver 22. Consistently injured. <laughs> he has been consistent. <laughs> Uh, wide receiver 22, Jordan Addison versus fellow rookie this past year. Wide receiver 23, Jackson Smith and Jigba. I thought you were going to say Zay Flowers. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. I knew which one I wanted there, but this one I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to go um, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Okay. Who is my higher ranked rookie going into this off the tape alone. Jordan Addison's smooth. He, he's a good route runner. He's super young, and he showed what he could do. Definitely without a guy like Justin Jefferson there. But um, when you're talking about Murky Waters, they just signed T.J. Hawkinson to an extension. They're going to make T, uh, Justin Jefferson the highest paid receiver in NFL history. Yeah. So he is for sure the third option um, there in Minnesota. And where Jackson Smith and Jigba has a much clearer path to be that number one option in Seattle – I don't know if Tyler Lockett's going to make it on the team this year. I would expect him with his salary to be off the team, so be him and DK Metcalf. And I really still believe in Jackson Smith and Jigba's tape. Um, mm-hmm. I really love how loose his hips are, his route running. His, he has good hands. So, for me, 
I'm going to take stick with the tape and the upside of the position here, and I'm going to go Jackson Smith and Jigba. Ditto, man. Uh, I know it's kind of boring to just sit there and agree with you on that, but uh, Jordan Addison is a really nice player. Oh, yeah. And he was one of the most pro-ready guys, and we said it coming out. Um, and he and he did a lot of what we thought. I think he even surpassed because um, obviously with Justin with yeah Justin Jefferson being out for so long, he wasn't afforded kind of some of the stuff that we thought he was going to be getting. Uh, just sure. easy stuff based off one on one coverage and stuff because he wasn't getting that for a, a big majority of the year because just Je- Justin Jefferson wasn't there, so he was having to do it. Um, based off being not the number one target in the offense because that was probably Hawkinson while he sure. was gone, but um, still the number one wide receiver option. Um, so I think he probably grew a lot quicker than we thought, but still Jackson Smith and Jigba just, uh, I think is a, is a better all around wide receiver and has just more upside. Uh, that I think that's the key of all of it for me. I think their floors are fairly similar. Yeah. I, they could both end up being the wide receiver twos on their team that they're consistently at 12 to 14 points per game, really reliable. But if there was one that had a chance to break out, I think it's Jackson Smith and Jigba. And so that that's that's really the only difference between the two for me because Jordan Addison showed me everything I needed to see this pe- this past year. I just don't see a scenario where the Vikings let Justin Jefferson walk in free agency. No, there's, there's no I chance. Just, I just don't see that it's as not, a scenario. It's not happening. But on, on the converse side of it, you know, um, DK Metcalf over there in Seattle is... New coaching staff, it's a you new, never know. He's a no, it's a new coaching staff, and they can get out from underneath that contract after next year. Mm-hmm. So if, he's, if he is, you know, having some issues with his attitude, which we've seen... It's happened in the past. That, that before, if yeah, he's having those scheme. kind of... Yeah, if we if he's had having those kind of blow ups and, and and there's not Pete Carroll there to kind of bring that thing along and bring mm-hmm. him back, uh, you know, back down to earth a little bit. Uh, who knows? He, so he, he's always been kind of like Phil Jackson in the sense of really good at managing the egos yes. and kind of getting everyone to play together. Like what happened as soon as Russ Wilson left? Right. You know, like all of a sudden, all of that stuff came out. He did a really good job of keeping everything in house, kind of working with all of those players and personalities and, and things like that. He was very much a soothsayer. I, maybe Dan Quinn's that kind of guy too, but he doesn't strike me as that type of. Well, and he's not okay. even the, and he's not even the coach. So that's fine. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's McDonald. Like the <laughs> Dan Quinn was like he, the front runner. For he was so a front long. runner forever. And now he's in Washington. <laughs> now he's in Washington. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so Dan Quinn's definitely not going to be able to do it. <laughs> no, for sure. It was the one rolling him up. hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> I mean, it's bad when like defensive, like the other team's coach is like, "Oh, we're gonna make DK Metcalf commit a penalty." Yeah, yeah. They and know they that. they know how to do it, right? Yeah. Exactly. They just get under his skin, and he loses his stuff a little bit, and just you know the the lid pops. So, I think just with that alone, the fact that they can get out from underneath that, and it's all new, everything there that I don't know. I don't want to say that it's likely, but it's possible. It's with it's within the realm of possibilities. Whereas in Justin Jefferson, we all think is going to be a long term Viking. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. Attention, Dynasty nerds. Want to play Dynasty like a pro? Check out FFPC, where serious Dynasty leagues have thrived since 2010. You can dive into a world of over 1,500 leagues with stakes ranging from $100 all the way up to an elite $5,000 league. FFPC isn't just a game, it's a community. With unique formats like TriFlex and year-round trading, it keeps the fantasy spirit alive all year. Here's my favorite thing about FFPC leagues. They stand the test of time. They've never had a single Dynasty League fold thanks to their orphan season. When you join an FFPC league, you can count on it staying around. They've completely revamped their Dynasty for Sale pages now on the web and app, making it easier to scout and snag the perfect dynasty team. Have you ever dreamed of turning a diamond in the rough into a champion? FFPC Orphans offers that exact thrill. Join the ranks of savvy managers at FFPC. Use our code NERDS for $25 off. Visit myffpc.com. Explore the dynasty landscape. Find your next challenge. The FFPC where your dynasty journey begins. Remember, that's code NERDS for your special discount on your next league. All right, so I originally was going to put these players 
into pick your poison. So we have like a half a game here right in between these games because I didn't know a good way to do this, but I thought it was really interesting. All four of these running backs have almost identical Dynasty Nerds ADP. Almost identical. Like all of them were within like three spots of each other. So I want your guys' order and why for these four running backs. All right, ready? And I'm giving to you the ADP order, but like I said, they're very close. Jonathan Taylor, Travis Etienne, Kyron Williams, Devon A. Chan. How would you guys order those four running backs? <sighs> Etienne's last. Yeah, I agree I, with I that. Think, I think we have consensus on that. I was surprised to see him above Kyron and, and A. Chan. Yeah, Etienne last. I would go... It's tough. It's tough between A Chan and and Kyron. And I would uh, lean and Jonathan Taylor. I would lean man. Jonathan Taylor one. Yeah. Okay. And I would probably personally. I mean, dude, Kyron Williams averaging twenty one points per game. Yes, yeah. it's a hard to pass up. But A Chan is the only player in NFL history to have one hundred touches and average over seven yards per carry. And like Ridiculous. every time he was on the field, and now he's a better chance next year to he do was, that. Like every time he was ripping off like eight, nine yards every single time he touched the ball. If he wasn't ripping me off sixty, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that is that is really tough. That is like I would probably take Jonathan Taylor first, and I don't even know why. I was gonna I, say why, because I don't know that I would. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking about that too. Like I'm I'm trying to think if I would as well. I mean, he's on a second contract. He is the oldest one of the yeah, bunch. He's the oldest one of the group. Yeah, maybe I wouldn't. So maybe it's actually, which means I, I mean, got a longer track records. record. Good track oh. record. Love the head coach and Steichen. Steichen. They play longer, in a dome. He, longer track. He, he had Less one weapons really out good there. Year. Yeah, you're right. And Jonathan Taylor really did only have one great year. Yeah, he, he had other good seasons. Yeah, um, but even in those good seasons, he missed some time due to either contract or injury. Or yeah, but with all that being said, the more we're talking about it, the more I probably would put Jonathan Taylor third. Okay. Which means I'm going to go and I have to go readjust my running back ring. So I have to look at this. So it comes down to a running back coming off of a dynamic year where he's averaged 21.3 points per game versus a running back in another really good offense, a speed offense that struggles in the wintertime. But when this player is on the field, he's, de- he's involved in all aspects of the game. And again, he averaged over seven yards per carry. The only player in the history of the NFL to do that with 100 plus touches. That's. That is tough. It's wild. It's a, it's very difficult for me to to separate those two players. Is I think I would go. Okay, I got it. I think yeah. I'll, now split again. The split in the hair, smallest of hairs, and and like, you can see why all these guys, other than maybe ET, had it's such like, close ADPs. It's like a it's like a thirteen year old's goatee. That's how thin these hairs are. <laughs> it's I'd go Kyron Williams, Devon Achan, Jonathan Taylor, Travis Etienne. That's okay. my four, and that's. If you ask me an hour from now, it, it might, might be, be different. different. But like scenario processing in my head, if I was on the clock and a yeah. startup, where would I go? It'd be real hard not to go H hand. But him just missing that time just enough this year. And Kyron was a dog pretty much all season long, averaging over twenty points per game at running back. Only other one to do that was Christian McCaffrey. I would I would give him the edge. Ky- Kyron missed a couple games, didn't he? Kyron yeah, he missed did. a, uh, about four, four right? Yeah, he missed weeks number seven through eleven, so and he didn't play week eighteen. And neither guy is a yeah. big guy. Neither you know, they're one both of them is. yeah considered undersized running backs. It's it's really tough. I, I can I Travis pass? Etienne can is I, a separate. Can I tier. pass? <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I just take all three? I like them all. No, I I I I totally. I said I'm having a hard time. Initially, I said I'm having a hard time dividing. Kyron and what's his name? It's because I already I had Jonathan Taylor third. Okay, I uh, in my brain already. So Jonathan Taylor is third. Mm-hmm. Etn is fourth for me easily, and if those other two f- flip a coin, man, mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't know. You, you like the Miami Dolphins? <laughs> Take AJ. You know what I mean? It's like, so close. And yeah. and to to even add, if you're a West Coast guy, if you go more Kyron. fuel to the fodder. One on one side of it, you're like, well. HM is probably a little safer with the draft capital than Kyron is. Sure. But 
on the flip side, on the other side, Ky- Kyron Williams is more involved in everything the offense does yeah. than a chan. He's going to average probably more touches per game. Sure. So it, it is, it's, I mean, you can keep going back and forth and I, I have them right next to each other. I had Jonathan Taylor as the top guy in this group. I don't know that I'm ready to change it. For me, it's a tier difference though. It's like Taylor and, and Kyron and H and then ETN's in a different tier. Yeah. Like he's not in the, the same tier as those guys for me. I, I, I mean, I agree with that. And I think he's always been a guy that's, we've talked about almost a nausea that is just inconsistent. He's just inconsistent. Like how the heck do you know what you're going to get out of the guy week in and week out? And I would, I would much rather have a guy that, that, w- that got me 12 points a game every, every single, single week. week than a guy that got me 21, you know, 21 points one week and, and three the next, like, forget it. Right. All right. Let's wait, move. So wait, how did you rank him? Um, I told you to flip a coin. I don't care. How did you rank? However you want. I still me. have Jonathan Taylor as a top guy. Then who is two? Then I have H and then Kyron and ETN. So we're all different. I don't feel I don't feel good about it though. I, you could take outside of ETN. You could put them in a box, shake them up, draw three random out, and I'd probably be like, oh yeah, I'm cool with that. Yeah. Oh, 100 percent cool with all three of them. If I got any one of them, I wouldn't be like, oh, I wish I had that guy. The only yeah. guy I would be sad that I had that I got was ETN. Yeah. If if the, all four of them were in a box. If they were all in a box. <laughs> yes. But he's in a different box. Yeah. <laughs> he gets taken in the box with Kenneth Walker. He's not in this box. <laughs> all, all right. right. All right. Let's move on to the Isaiah Likelyometer. If you are new to the Isaiah Likelyometer, or sometimes just shortened to the Likelyometer, here's how it works. I will give a scenario, and these two fine gentlemen will give me a number between 1 and 10. Somehow 5 is the middle, even though it's not. Five is the middle, and you can choose points-wise where you would like to put it in this order. Quarterbacks, you can do quarter points. So if you want to do 4.25, you're welcome to. You could still give whole numbers or half. doesn't matter, but you're welcome to use quarter points. Quarter in, quarter point increments. That's right. Quarter point increments. Mm-hmm. Halfbacks, you can use half points. I am. So either whole points or half points. Nothing else. Wide receiver, wide open. Wide open. Any decimal point you wish. Yep. All right. Tight ends. Tight ends, we keep it tight. Keep it Only tight. whole numbers. Whole, whole numbers. numbers. All right. I'm yep. ready. That's it. This whole is how it works. All right. So we've got a quarterback we're talking about in the first one. So quarter points are allowed. On the Isaiah Likely meter. Patrick Mahomes wins another Super Bowl next season to make it three in a row. Nine I thought you were say point seven five. I thought you were gonna say <laughs> Again, I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> Tan. 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 So to win three in a row, um, it's never been done. Never, ever been done. I am going to go this five. Was, this one's the least fantasy related, but yeah. it, felt, it, felt, it felt timely. No, I, I'm going to go five. Five, which is dead center. When dead center, even though it's quarter points. Rich. Tough to do. So AFC is real tough to get out of, regardless. And he he's he just keeps managing to do it. Well, um, that de- I, I don't know that defense is going to be the same defense next year as well, and that helped a lot. I mean, he carried the team in the playoffs, but and that offense will probably get better. Kelsey's going to be a little bit older there. Mm-hmm. It's just going to be so like they got to get through the Ravens, the Browns, the Bills. I mean, the Texans. There's so many. The, the Chargers are probably better next year. There's sure. a lot of good teams in the AFC. Aaron Rodgers would be better. Quarterback in the Jets. Yep. Maybe more than four plays. So maybe he'll double it. Five. I mean, if any, if anybody's going to do something nobody's ever done, it's going to be the greatest quarterback of all time. So, yeah. Five. So I'll, since Rich wasn't able to get off the fence, I will. All right. 5.25%. <laughs> I think it's more likely than, than it is to happen than it is to not. Um, but still, it is, it is, never, it has never been done. So yeah. it is going to be very difficult. It's a, it's a long, Long road to hoe. Uh, but he, home exactly. <laughs> on this game. Yep. But I think he could do it for sure. I got a couple ice cubes in my mouth. Yeah, you do. Uh, I went with a 4.25 on this. It's it's so tough to even just pick the correct Super Bowl winner in general, let alone having someone do it three straight times. Is, I mean, it's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. But like we've said, it's tough to bet against. They don't them. call this dynasty for nothing. Let's move on. All right. All right. <laughs> to actual dynasty, 
relevant questions now. On the Isaiah Likelio meter, CMC does not finish as the number one overall running back in 2024. Mm. How likely is it for him to not finish as the number one overall running back? I would love to see his total carries or his total touches on the year, and including playoffs, including Super Bowl, all that kind of good stuff. I don't have the numbers here in front of me. I'm guessing it's pretty high, though. Um, I'm going to say 2.5. So you think it's very likely that he ends up as the number one guy again? Yeah. He's I, that good. I, I think, think the only way he's tall, in my opinion. I think the only way he doesn't is if he gets injured. And yeah. That's, and that's why I wanted to see how many carries he has because, I mean. He's had two relatively healthy seasons in a row. He has. But he, we've seen him be injured. But he had injured. a long history of not before that. Right. We've seen him be injured and miss time before. I really love the way Shanahan uses him. He it does. Just, it gets him. He, he puts him in good space. He, so much motion in offense. Uh, and the dude's just been. a. Th- <laughs> he goes from averaging 30 points per game pre-injury to after injury averaging about 25 points per game. So, <laughs> yeah, he's 2.5. He's, and that's this injury. That's well, my only concern. I, I have no concern whether, like, I don't think he's going to drop off a cliff or anything like that. First battle hall. So my, my son was like, we watched the Super Bowl. He's like, Dad, he's like, he's like, is Christian McCaffrey the best white running back of all time? And I was like, no, it's Peyton Hillis. <laughs> <laughs> I told him, I was, like, I was like, son, I was like, he's one of the best running backs of all time. I was like, he's a first battle hall of famer. He's that. He's so dynamic. So... He changes the game. I mean, that's for sure. He's a difference maker yeah. at the at the position, and there's not a lot of them in the NFL. No, and he's one of them. Brees Hall is one of them. We think Bijan can be one of them. Nick Chubb, healthy, is one of those yeah. guys. Derrick Henry is one of those guys. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think there's a very good chance he's running back one. Um, how was the question worded so I know how to that he's not okay. the number one running back in 2024. The likely the the smaller the number, the more likely he is. Right. Yeah, so that's why I gave it a two five. Um, you can only use half points. I'm gonna go four, four. So I think it's more likely that he does it that he than he doesn't, and I'm just gonna allow for a little bit more wiggle room for injuries, which makes way more sense, right? Like it's so hard to be like the yeah. number one, but like, he just falls in that category of like when Antonio Brown like, yeah. oh, he's he's gonna be the best. I went with a five on it. I think it's I think it's really a coin flip on on this one. You have injuries. But we do have some some young guys that are starting to ascend. And at what point does Christian McCaffrey do what all running backs eventually do? And they start to just slow down enough to where, you know, maybe another guy or two passes him. We'll see. He he he's the honestly, he's already started defying the odds in that sense because he's this was what, age twenty seven season, I believe. I mean, it sounds right. Uh, he, he's already kind of on that upper echelon of where he's 27. We kind of start to worry about that a little bit. 28 definitely puts you in that range of, hey, when is it going to happen? There are outliers that it takes him until their 30s, and he he's, could be that guy. He's an outlier, had two years of rest. He's, he's, I don't know if I'd call injury rest. I would. You're not playing. Yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> rehab and stuff. I know. That. But yeah, I mean, he's just, he's an outlier. He falls in that category of outlier to me. Like he's yeah. a true difference maker. His money game is in the pass. He's dynamic between tackles, but he even yeah. when he loses a step a little bit there, he'll still be dynamic in the passing game. For sure. For sure. Absolutely. Guys, I got to tell you about my friends at Underdog Fantasy. Right now, they have the pre-NFL Draft 2024 Best Ball is live on Underdog. Draft your favorite rookie sleepers you've discovered in the Dynasty Nerds film room. Play in $3 contest all the way up to $1,000 contest. Draft your team and never worry about setting a lineup. You need to get in on this action ASAP. Sign up at Underdog with the promo code NERDS. And Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100 for new members only. And yes, Dynasty Nerds is still giving new users a free Nerd Herd and Dynasty GM annual bundle membership with your deposit of $10 or more at Underdog by using that promo code NERDS. So you get all our tools all access to the Nerd Herd by putting a $10 deposit down in there. Your Dynasty Nerds promo code will be sent by email within 48 hours of sign up. New members only. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerned with your play, call 1 800 Gambler, visit www 
ncpgambling.org. In Arizona, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP. In New York, call 1-877-HOPE-NEW-YORK. In Tennessee, 1-800-889-9789. All right, next one here. <clears throat> Marvin Harrison Jr. is a wide receiver one, so a top 12 guy, in his very first season. Isaiah likely meter on Marvin Harrison Jr. And this is wide open because yeah. he's a wide receiver. Yeah, this is so 8.6. Okay, so you feel very confident that he'll be a wide receiver one out the rip. Because I feel like he's going to go to Arizona. That's, okay. that's in my brain what game I was playing. Yeah, <laughs> like, it, I, I feel like he's going to go to Arizona. Probably. He's just be force-fed passes. He, any, most places that he goes... He'll step onto the field and be the most physically gifted wide receiver. If he goes to New England, I'm dropping that down to a 4.1. Right. But an 8.6 with Arizona. So for what it's worth, right now, the current order, according to Tankathon, Bears, Washington, New England at three, yeah. which they very well could. They can't pass on a quarterback. You would think they wouldn't, but you never know. That'd be so uh, stupid. Arizona Cardinals. L.A. Chargers, New York Giants. I don't see any scenario in the world where he falls past six. But, I mean, there's a situation where one of these teams trades for Justin Fields, and it changes everything. It like, could. Washington gives up their yep. second. You know, like, New England gives up their second, yeah. which is a high second for Justin Fields. And then that team will then take and pair him up with this quarter receiver from college, Marvin Harrison Jr., which then still kind of makes me feel good about it. But if he goes to Washington, you got, you got Terry McLaurin, McLaurin there. Yeah. You got John Dotson there. Um, if you go to New England, there's nothing. I'd still feel like an 8.6. The cover is bare there. Yeah, so 8.6. Um, I'm sticking with it. I mean, we could even see the Giants maybe trade up, try to get him. They could use. I'm going to go 6. Daniel yeah. Jones is back, baby. <laughs> 6.125. Okay. If if the Giants traded up and took Marvin Harrison Jr., I'm making so many more Daniel Jones trades. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, as is the world, probably. Uh, I I went with a seven point three eight okay. on this one. I think I think there's a very good chance we we've seen it almost every year now where the top tier wide receiver in the class, at least one of them, ends up inside the top twelve. Uh, so we we saw it with this year Pukunuku. We didn't know he was the top tier. Yeah. Uh, but but he ended up being a wide receiver one. We've seen it from guys like Chase. We've seen it, like it happens almost every Justin Jefferson. Yep. So it, it, it's it's definitely in the realm of possibility for rookies to do it in today's day and age. It's been a, it's been a lot smoother transition for some of those guys, right? Yep, yep. So I, I think it's more likely than not. the The biggest question mark is wherever he ends up going, is that quarterback good enough that he isn't going to get Garrett Wilson? Like that's that's, that's really it. the biggest question. That's real. Yep, it really is. Um, because, I, like I was saying, he's going to step on the field and be the most physically gifted guy. It's going to depend on who's throwing him the ball. Is what was what I ended was going to end that sentence. With. Sure, Kyler Murray in the desert. All right, number four on the Isaiah Likely O meter. Same type of idea here. Caleb Williams is a quarterback one in twenty twenty four. What's the Isaiah Likely O meter on that? Two point two five. Ooh, you do not feel good about that. No, I don't feel like a good about a quarterback that's coming in that had um, that played on a team that pretty much always didn't have a ton of pressure. A lot of his receivers were open. Mm -hmm. Doesn't didn't really have to read a ton. No, it's so hard for a quarterback one to come out and succeed at a high level. That's not a r pure rushing quarterback, sure. right? That doesn't come out and just rushes the ball. So I mean. He's not going to be better than, bar no injuries, not better than going to do better than Josh Allen. He's not going to do better than Jalen Hurts. He's and not going to do better than Dak. He's where not did do Chicago than land with their offensive coordinator? I don't remember. Uh, it, it was going back and forth. It was going to be uh, Cliff Kingsbury, and then he went on he to, went to Washington. 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 Uh, Bears, let me see. Let me look. I honestly don't remember either. I, that one was one of those ones that didn't stick for me. Uh, I can I can look. I think I had a page. Shane up. Waldron. Which he was former Seahawks guy, right? I can't remember. Uh, yep. Okay. Yep. Waldron was the former Seahawks guy. He was with Geno Smith. All right. So we could s see a lot of running the football possibly coming our way. I mean, look at what look what CJ Stroud. So no, I don't. I don't. I don't think it's a very good. I don't, I just don't think it's a very good no. shot. CJ Stroud did historical numbers, mm -hmm. right? From a rookie, quarterback eleven, just made it as a quarterback one. Mm -hmm. Historical numbers, you know, rookie of the year, like just. 
it's so hard for a quarterback to come in and produce at a high level right away. I, I'm going to go a little bit higher than you guys simply because... Well, I didn't even give a number yet. Oh, my fault. Go ahead. Go ahead. 3.25. Go. Oh, I should have <laughs> went 10. <laughs> 10. Right. Try. 10. Try to so, top that. Yeah, you ain't going higher than that. Suck it. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit higher. I, I went with five on this one as well. I think it's just as likely to happen as, as to not happen. And it's... I understand it from the passing perspective. It's really difficult. CJ Stroud ain't running the football. Caleb Williams is going to run the football. We saw what Justin Fields was able to do uh, early on in his career, running around, making things happen. He was able to put up tons of fantasy points because of his legs. I love that we just slam dunked him to Chicago as well. It, yeah, I would, I would be really surprised if not. It yeah, really seems like that's pointed. who they're going yeah. to do. There's but, been no there's but, been no talk out of Chicago to quell those warmers whatsoever. No, if you like, wanted to raise the price for the number one pick, you would say, I want this quarterback. You gotta come pry him out of my freaking hands. And yeah. then that raises the price. You know it what does. I mean? Um so it, it'll it will be interesting to see how all this plays out. I would say today if I had to put uh, an Isaiah Lake Leo meter on the Bears taking Caleb Williams. The number one pick, I would put it at probably an eight point five. I'll put it at nine point five. Okay, because the more I like, the more I said, oh, they, they got to build around five. Justin Fields. Like, I've read so many articles on Fields, like overall statistics and his inconsistencies. There, it's oh. kind of like, yeah, dude, you got to reset. Like, you you don't get that opportunity often ever mm-hmm. to have the number one overall pick with a quarterback that's worth the number one overall pick. Like, right. you have to take that player and. Just, even if there's someone equal, you just reset the clock on that money and you get extra value on Justin Fields. It's just a way the cookie. Sorry, Justin. Blame Carolina. Yeah, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah, at least you're not Bryce Young. All right. We got two more. Two more. Let's let's get through them rapid fire. We're at uh, around 44 minutes. Okay, not too bad. Uh, Daniel Jones. We just mentioned him a second ago. Daniel Jones. Finishes as a starting quarterback Somewhere, Daniel Jones is now a number <laughs> <laughs> at the end of at the end of the season. So he's still the starting quarterback at the end of the season for somebody in 2024. 7.5. Okay. Listen, Daniel, so wait, what do you think? Daniel so, Jones no, on, uh, is yeah. such a bad product of the system. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say quarterback. <laughs> that... Like, that <laughs> offensive line was terrible. The only good receiving weapon he really had was Darius Slayton. Uh, he never had a chance to play with Darren Waller. Uh, yeah. You know, so Saquon was banged up for most of the time where he's, like, really back out there, too. So, for me, I think Daniel Jones, again, he's not the best quarterback in the world, but he is capable. He's mm-hmm. capable, and he can do some, thing with, some things with his legs yeah. that goes kind of unreported or Response. unremembered. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Listen, I, I just, I do think this is, do you think this is their last year there as a coaching staff? It, if they don't have great success, yeah. absolutely. So aren't don't you think they're going to put it all in him because they don't have a choice? Yeah. I think you gonna, would think. They're going to draft a dynamic receiver like a Roman Dunze or Malik Neighbors yeah. or Brock Bowers, a tight end. I think they have to do go something. go that way and big. sign somebody for agency. Like sign T. Higgins and draft Brock Bowers. But there's a rumor that even if the first three quarterbacks are gone at pick six, that they would be interested in J.J. McCarthy, which would be really interesting. I don't believe anything I read this time of year when it comes to draft picks. Didn't you just talk about all the stuff you were reading about the Chicago Bears? <laughs> no, I'm, about, no, I'm about about who people are going to take, who people are going to take. I, was reading about, I don't believe in nothing. No, that I spent was, uh, so much time reading those, back. <laughs> those were statistics. No, not about Caleb Williams, about Justin it's Fields. All fiction. Statistics. I love fiction reading. <laughs> it's fantastic. Oh, <laughs> yeah, big Stephen King fan. <laughs> anyway, my number is probably a little bit lower than that, but I, I still think it's more likely than not. You had what number? 7.5. Oh, all right. 7.25. <laughs> we're was close. Say 7. We're in the same tier. Because I thought you had a higher number. <laughs> I, I'm definitely lower. I'm not confident he's still the starting quarterback at the end of the season. I think he'll start the year. Well, you're not. Welcome, I don't. You're think not welcome to the comeback of the player of the year party. Dang it, man! Kim Kardashian. <laughs> uh, the Kim Kardashian I, award. I gave it a four point two five. Wow, four point two. I think it's less five. likely than it is likely. Last one. <laughs> what, what, think Tommy DeVito's gonna be back there slugging pizzas? <laughs> he could. He could be. After you never know. Jones. Breaks a neck again. It's a long neck. It is. Giraffe neck over here. I've seen longer. 
Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> Wait, Devon A. Chan. Who's their one quarterback? That a really long neck. Uh, uh, it was the guy Cardinals? from Tampa Bay. Uh, yeah. Oh, Tampa Bay. Yeah. Well, I think he was on the Cardinals too at one point. He was for a lot of teams. Glennon, <laughs> Mike, Glennon. Mike Glennon. Mike Glennon. Yep. That's a lot of neck. Long draft. His great great grandpa was a draft. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Last one, Devon A. Chan. Yes. Finishes as a top five running back in 2024. Top five is a little rich. Little rich, rich. That's a little rich for me too. And I'm a big I'm yeah. About as, I've been a big A Chan fan from day one. I think they're gonna still have too much competition for carries for him to get there. Me too. I think it's going to be a two point five for me. So I'm gonna go low. I'm gonna go like a three. Apparently I'm the captain of the uh Devon H Chan fan club. I'm gonna put it at a five and a half. What? I mean, so McCaffrey, so barring people are healthy, right? McCaffrey for sure. McCaffrey for sure will be in there. Brees Hall for Brees sure. Hall. Very likely. Kyron Williams healthy probably for sure. Probably. Yep. Jameer Gibbs? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe Bijan? Bijan probably. Because the, whoever's there. Arthur Smith's gone. Yeah, Arthur Ar- Ar- Smith's gone, and I can't remember who the OC is now. So Jonathan Taylor's a maybe. Yeah. Saquon somewhere. Saquon, maybe. depending where he goes, maybe. So, I mean, it's very up in the air, but here's wow, the, the thing. The more I talk about it out loud, the more, like, I'm going it's to a five because there's way more turdy Fergies out there than I realized. <laughs> uh, the thing that's intriguing to I me mean, you is. You missed Alvin Kamara because if he plays a full season, he's going to be maybe. in that conversation. Yeah, him yeah. on the Rams. <laughs> him, on, him on the Cowboys. They have two top five running Him backs. on the Cowboys. Oh, Kamara on the Ooh, Cowboys. Ooh, buddy. Him and Dak Attack. Woo, man. There you go. That's Another Tony Pollard. Uh, okay. Um, anyway. All that to say, but in action, I think Devon one. Achan, if if he can stay healthy, which is which is an if, sure, it's absolutely an if that came in part of my two point five as well, just him being small. But we had the converse of what I think could potentially happen this season. This was the first time in like forever that Raheem Mostert stayed healthy for an entire season. We never see that. It's always man, what could Raheem Mostert be if he were able to stay healthy? He never has been except for nope. this year. All of a sudden, so if if we have these older running backs, which two are, games next year, which are more prone to injury, yeah. you know, as they get older, they're more prone to injury. Like thirty-two. Yeah, uh, I think the odds are he'd already be thirty-two. He might be thirty-three. Yeah, yeah. next year. Either He's way, thirty-one right now. Okay. Either way, thirty-two is. He scored like tw- how many touchdowns? He had? He had like twenty, 20 touchdowns. Something? It was over, something nuts. over twenty touchdowns. Uh, whatever it was, it was nuts. But I think I think A. Chan has a chance if he can get enough volume, which. I think is a real possibility next year with, with his efficiency level. If it's even sort of close, he'll, he'll get there. Yeah. He'll get there. Yeah. If it's even sort of close to the same efficiency level, he's averaging seven yards per carry, six and a half yards per carry, six yards per carry. I don't yeah. care. Like, and he's doing that with 200 carries, 180 carries, 5.25, and 50 receptions. 5.25, final answer. It gets you moving on up. Yeah. You can't do that. Half points of halfback. Oh. So you either got to join me at five and a half or do I'll, a five. I'd pace him at six. Wow, look at you guys moving up. You, guys, point, you guys were in the twos five and threes. Five. I moved you up. Five, five point five. I didn't move. I'm 2.5. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just more of like, <laughs> right, just, if he stays healthy, it's like, oh, it's going to be him or Joe Mixon. or like Raheem Mostert was running back five this year. Rashad White was four. ETN was three. Brees Hall was two. God bless Brees Hall. And Christian McCaffrey. So there we go. That wrapped up the unofficial official first ever game show edition of the the uh, free dinosaur show. See you next week. Adios.